Hi and welcome everyone. Thanks so much for the support. My name is Bruce Schwartz. I study in astronomy and I study in ufology like any regular hobbyist would try to do if they're curious about a certain field and that they're not necessarily working in it. I'm not going to hide it. I have a nice 14 inch telescope. I learned that uh, as NASA and scientists say, this object here looks uh, spherical. Let's talk briefly about that before going to see an object beside the sun. I've showed you an object beside the sun, but I've not necessarily told you why I believe it's a planetoid or uh, an object that is very large. NASA and scientists say that objects before they become spherical should be 200 to 300 kilometers wide. So basically when you're looking at an asteroid, it always looks like an, you know, a potato basically. And there's even a theory called the potato theory right? And just because of what I told you, asteroids look like potatoes. Ceres, a very large asteroid, almost spherical. But again, it's large. So this object that I saw beside the sun, to give you an idea, if we're seeing it circular or sort of spherical with the clouds going in front of it and the camera telling us that this object really is beside the sun. And if it's that large, and does not look like a potato, it could be something that's pretty large. So it wouldn't be surprising seeing it beside the sun. Obviously asteroids, that's where they come in, in the solar system, it is beside our sun. It's also important to note that this is the only most spherical object that I've ever seen beside the sun. I saw the other spherical object that I showed you, but it was smaller, which was very large. Look at this object. We could see that it's out of control. We could see it coming either through the corona or close to the moon, uh, sorry, close to the sun, um, its edge, right? But as it's going by, we could see certain shapes and stuff. We'll zoom up on this one. I've never zoomed up on this one. And I have a few of them that I haven't zoomed up on. And I always work on my research, as you guys and gals know it. I always go in closer and closer. The ideal is there's a limit to how close we can get. And this is about it, but at least we're still able to see. I mean, this is a beautiful, clear shot. Like, uh, can I, is it safe enough to say like, honestly, like NASA has shown before? Objects going by the sun in these big telescopes look the same thing, you know? Sure, they're closer. They could see nice colors. Probably don't have to filter red like I just did here to be able to see its shape. But I'm only trying to see the shape the best that I can. And that's exactly what I do. And I've been lucky to be able to see so many objects. Am I out there a lot? Well, of course, if not, I wouldn't be seeing objects. Are these objects occurring each day? Probably, but I'm not getting them each day because I'm not on the sun each day. But this is a really nice close shot of that object spiraling. And you know, when you're doing infrared, you note certain characteristics that are mostly the same. No matter how many objects you will cap capture, sorry, um, you will see them either going in a straight line without turning. You will see them uh, like a ball of light or like this, like that object you just saw, the, not this one, but the other object that is turning. This one doesn't look like it's spiraling. It looks very large and on a straight trajectory. Right, here's something really cool. I've showed you this one before. It's a UFO going very close to uh, an airplane. Look, there's a couple of them going by there. There's one going by, actually, sorry. Uh, those, the stars are going up. But uh, there's one UFO going down, and watch them meet. Um, if you have good eyes, try to notice what that UFO does when the plane goes by. Don't worry, I didn't see it myself here. It was way too fast, and we're not close enough. So, so that you understand why I'm getting in so close, and we're going to slow down the footage, it's quite simply just to analyze what we're seeing. I have a red filter up here because it goes best sometimes with the infrared. And at this, um, for this video, it seems to be uh, showing a lot more detail. So did you see it? That little line that comes from the UFO. There it is. <laughs> it's pretty fun to see the detail. Watch, seriously. You see just this line coming from the UFO. But honestly, this is... Uh, the closest I've ever seen a UFO to an airplane. And now you don't want to relax. I know some of you are going to say, Bruce, it doesn't mean it is close to the plane. They're just cr crossing trajectories. And you're absolutely right about that. But it just so happens that by magnifying this, you can see that there is a line or something coming from 
this UFO. So who says that they're not analyzing the planes? Eh? Theoretically, anyways. What do you think of this one? I showed it on the French channel yesterday. You've seen it also here before because this is what this channel consists of. I show my, my research every time I change or find something new or get a new image and I post it for you, even from old work, and I post everything new. So you will have a bit of everything and there's always something being seen or analyzed on the channel. I want you to see the size of that, okay? We're looking at the sun and I want you to see everything that's going on. Like for example, the the way this reacts as it goes through the corona. You can see that the further away from the sun it's getting while it's in the corona, it's actually looks like it's getting hotter because did you know that the surface of the sun was a lot cooler than the corona itself? Those are some cool things. And you wonder, you say, how can that even be? We're well, here in inversion again, just look at the beautiful large objects. Uh, object, sorry. Yes, but we're gonna see several objects because I have uh, captured a few going by the sun, which is pretty cool. One looks like Oumuamua, and actually News Snake Doss, uh, a very good friend, Frank, uh, a Spanish channel, has mentioned it the first time saying, Bruce, one of your captures really does look like Oumuamua. And yeah, for sure it does. It was going by the moon, and we're going to analyze that closer than I've ever showed it before, because uh, a few of you mentioned to me to zoom into that object spiraling by the moon or hitting the moon. So what are you looking at? Well, we're looking at several pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, probably seven, eight, nine, ten pieces um, that are brightening up, one brighter than the other. But why the smoke or why that line of uh, fire or whatever we can see? Well, objects that go by the sun don't always make it past the sun depending on their composition. For example, if they're made of ice, well, yes, they're going to uh, transition from substance to gas really fast, and we're possibly going to see those. Some of these could be debris. Look at these beautiful objects um, on the left too, and this one, I call it the pair of pants hanging in the sky, which was there for almost an hour, probably about 45 minutes to an hour, just sitting there as the clouds went by it. So these are very rare captures for sure. They're rare captures. It's not something I capture every day. This one, directional change. One of the coolest directional changes. And we're going to see another directional change at the end um, that I have showed you before as this one. But look at the close-up. The goal is to get in as close as you can to these images, but to start by further out so you guys can understand exactly what we're looking at. And for me, well... Once you get in, obviously you have to adjust the exposure and you don't want to descend the exposure down too much because you don't want to take away any light um, or detail from these uh, UFOs going by. But, you know, it's no advanced technology what I'm doing. I'm using an infrared second generation camera and I'm looking for uh, directional changes. Um, a lot of bugs and stuff appear in these infrared cameras and I'm not going to hide it and it's never easy to find and explain exactly what you're looking at but as anyone knows it as Cindy Lou who does too when you are operating this camera and an object comes by in the sky you tend to have an idea whether it's far or close and of course if this was to occur every day these swishing around things I wouldn't believe it right I've showed um, in my videos, a lot of debris that flies around. But, the, you know, Cindy was capturing these uh, tube-like objects. Uh, I'm not using the right word. But anyways, I've seen a couple in my video, and I don't believe they're bugs at all. And whatever they may be, say to yourself, like Cindy says herself, Cindy Luhu, it's an infrared camera. You're not going to capture it with your eyes. You're not going to see it with your eyes. So it may always remain a phenomenon, but um, these captures are legitimate raw captures, like any association, NASA. Hey, what do you think of this one? This one is spiraling around. It looks like uh, maybe one object that either came apart. Um, it was seen with the infrared. And again, you know, it's not a small object. And each frame that you're looking at, well, say to yourself, there are so many hundreds, even thousands of objects out there in space that are spiraling around or, you know, floating around, whether it be debris, whatever you want to call it, it's out there. 
One of my favorites, this is the object hitting the moon. No filter here, straight up color telescope. And this is what appeared, magnification zoom. I've showed many different magnification um, of this object. But today we're gonna do it drastically. Um, I wouldn't say the closest, but honestly, I probably wouldn't wanna get in closer than this. We're basically seeing everything we need to see. We're seeing the object do um, a lot of things. And it took me many years to understand that it was doing a lot of things by studying uh, astronomers and scientists use uh, light, um, you know, to detect uh, how hot these objects are. And again, don't forget, this was not infrared. This is straight up shot with a telescope. Objects that appear, even asteroids and comets, um, it's not for nothing, they have a white tail. And that's how our, our eyes see these objects and also how our telescopes see the objects. This one, pretty fascinating. Probably most comparable to Oumuamua. Again, like new Snake Doss mentioned himself. I had not even ever mentioned it here myself, but Frank said, Bruce, you know, uh, well, no, actually he didn't tell me this. <laughs> he posted a video, new Snake Doss on his channel, but basically he mentioned in his video that it was very similar to the size of Oumuamua. And again, he was just mentioning the mere comparison. But look at this object. Um, it's the only object that I ever got that was elongated like that. And the object seems to spiral down, catch on fire. You see a bunch of things happening. And don't forget, this object is spiraling down to the moon. But look at that. It looks like a shape. It, it's hard to explain, but just look what's going on. And it looks like uh, NASA when they land on the moon. Pssh, you see that fire was at the front of this object. I just turned this around there. It's at the front going down to the moon, right? And there it is coming down to the surface of the moon, just an object that seems to enter the atmosphere of the moon and then disappears. Directional changes in UFOs. These are some of the most amazing captures um, I've ever captured and don't forget one of only three or four incidences where I was able to document um, a clear directional change. This one is so clear and direct. Uh, you could uh, very uh, well see it uh, going towards the east or right and then it, it swivels off south and then west and you could see it very clearly there. Why was I not able to get it longer than that? Sometimes I don't even notice this. If I'm going down looking for a UFO, I didn't even see it go by honestly. Not only will the UFO research I'm doing not come out, but it'll never come out that there are critters on the moon, but there are. Houston, say again, please. Uh, you're